Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my cosy corner of the internet. This is Nephilim VA bringing you the second chapter of Inheritance written by A is for Amy 71 on AO3. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter that I uploaded of this fanfiction and you enjoy this one just as much. This fanfiction is for mature audiences with canon typical violence and a trigger warning for major character death. If that isn't your style, then I recommend Shades of Green, which is written by Maybe It's Friendly on AO3. It can be found on my channel. Canon Divergence is the name of the game, and it indulges the what-ifs of Midori Azuku having a quirk. With that being said, the chapter summary is as followed. Azuku discovered that his mother's quirk isn't the only one he has, and Kachan doesn't like that idea at all. Now I implore you to sit back and relax whilst I read to you. Chapter 2 Azuku didn't know how his life would ever be the same again. His mother hadn't just been hurt in the train wreck. She had died in it. Dad said that she died protecting him from being hurt, and that she was a hero. Heroes weren't supposed to die. After the funeral, which was something of an emotional blur, Dad had taken Izuku on a long airplane ride to Taiwan, where Izuku had been looked after by an older lady named Shuling that didn't speak any Japanese. It was weird to hear his father speaking Mandarin to other people too. His dad promised that they would only be there for a few days while he got things here in order, so they could move back to Japan. But all you could see out the windows were other really tall buildings. He ended up spending all of his time watching unfamiliar cartoons that he couldn't really understand since he wasn't allowed to go out and didn't know how to tell the woman looking after him if he wanted to do anything anyway. He missed home. He missed his mum. Azuku often got tearful when he thought about his mother. Every time his eyes filled with tears, Shuling would give him little squares of nugget and pat his hand gently. He understood that she was trying to comfort him, but it didn't help much. His dad was gone most of the time, and when he came back he was exhausted and usually went right to sleep, only to be gone again by the time Azuku woke up each morning. The only time Azuku really went out the entire time he was in Taiwan was to visit the hospital to have the stitches in his forehead removed. His father had gone with him for this, and Azuku had been less anxious. But as they were arriving at the hospital, an ambulance arrived and stopped right in front of them. They hurried a man out of the back, who was very old-looking, and they were pressing on his chest and calling to others to come and help. Azuku felt a shiver zoom up his spine at the sight, and his father quickly deterred him away from the ambulance entrance to a different door. He sat still on the examination table while the doctor came and carefully removed the bandage over the stitches on Azuku's head. He says this won't hurt. His dad translated for the doctor. It might feel a little weird or itchy, though. Izuku nodded and closed his eyes and held his breath. Izuku, what? His dad asked, sounding alarmed. Izuku opened his eyes and let out his breath in anticipation when his dad began to speak in rapid Mandarin to the doctor. Izuku, do you feel okay? His dad asked, studying him carefully. Can you do that again? Do what? 
Azuku asked, feeling puzzled. What you're just doing, his father encouraged. Izuku obediently closed his eyes, thinking that the doctor was about to pull the stitches out. He held his breath and waited, but no one did anything, so he opened his eyes again and looked at his dad quizzically. Is he not gonna take him out? He asked anxiously. He had seen the stitches when the bandage had been changed, and they were ugly and black and looked like a centipede marching across his forehead. He wanted them to go away. More Mandarin? Zoo, can you keep your eyes open and hold your breath for me for a few seconds? Like if you were going swimming? His dad asked, finally. Izuku did what he asked, and he could see the doctor and his dad staring at him with interest. Izuku looked down at his knees and saw he could see the table he was sitting on through his legs. It was the same with his hands. He had turned see-through! He let out his breath in a whoosh and saw himself go back to normal. Again? his dad said at the direction of the doctor. Hold your breath as long as you can. Azuku sucked in a breath and saw himself turn transparent again. The doctor poked him with the end of a pen, but nothing else happened. Okay, Zoo, you can breathe normally now. Has that ever happened before? Azuku shook his head. What did it mean? His dad talked with the doctor in Mandarin again, and after a long conversation that Azuku couldn't understand, his dad sighed. Okay, Zoo, he's gonna take out your stitches now. Try not to hold your breath while he does it, okay? But what about- Azuku began to ask. We don't know, buddy. We'll see the doctor when we get back to Japan and find out. Luckily, they got back on a plane two weeks later and returned to Azuku's familiar home, in the apartment he had lived in with his mother before. His forehead was as healed as it was likely to get, according to the doctor in Taiwan. Azuku had a bright pink scar that wasn't much more than a long line from his hairline above his right eyebrow to his left temple. Time would probably fade it from bright pink to a more closely resembling his skin tone. All of the bruises had faded by now, and physically, Azuku was back to normal. His father dropped him off at school on the Monday morning after they got back to Japan, and the kids all gathered around him, having heard from Kachan that he had a quirk now. The teachers exclaimed over him and made a fuss when he showed everyone how he could make a box of crayons flow over to him from a nearby table. Congratulations, Azuku-kun, one of the teachers said proudly. Oh, I can do this too, Azuku said, feeling proud of himself as he breathed in deeply and held his breath. Everyone gasped as he turned transparent, clothes and all, until he let out his breath again. Wow! Amazing! How did you get two quirks? Kachan demanded, looking upset. Azuku shrugged. I don't know. It just happened. My dad's gonna take me to the doctor to find out as soon as he can. Azuku said. Well, having two quirks is weird, Kachan declared with a pout. And neither of them are as good as mine. Azuku didn't know what Kachan was getting mad about, but he nodded anyway. Kachan's quirk is still the coolest! The other boy seemed to be slightly mollified by this, and the day went on as usual. 
When it was time for them to go play outside, Karchan approached him and said quietly, I'm sorry about your mom. Thanks, Azuku said, which is what his father always said to people who said that to him. I miss her. Of course you do, stupid. She's your mom. But my mom says it'll be okay, so it will. Karchan seemed absolutely certain of this. Azuku nodded, not knowing what else he could say, and let himself be drawn into games on the playground. After school, he was picked up by Karchan's mom when she came to get Karchan. Your dad said you should come home with me and Katsuki for a while, until he can make other arrangements for you while he's at work. Won't that be fun? Azuku looked over to Karchan, who looked like it was the first time he was hearing about this new arrangement. For how long? The blonde boy asked. I'm not sure, his mother said with a raised eyebrow. As long as it takes for Midoriya-san to find an after-school program or babysitter that he trusts to take care of Azuku while he's at work. Okay, Azuku said, not sure why Karchan didn't seem excited about it. Thank you! The school wasn't too far from Karchan's house, so they all walked together. Karchan found a stick on the ground and ran ahead, dragging it along the low walls and fences next to the sidewalk. Azuku took Auntie's hand like he used to when his mother picked him up from school. He didn't even really think about it beforehand as he held on to her fingers and walked quietly next to her. He felt his eyes sting a bit as he remembered that he wouldn't be able to do this with his mother ever again. But he held the tears back. Dad said he needed to be brave now. Hey! Karchan said, stomping back to them and pulling on Azuku's arm. Azuku was forced to let go of Auntie's hand as Karchan dragged him ahead to look at a dead bug being carried away by a line of ants near the street. Once they got to the Bakugo house, Karchan immediately went to sit at the little table in the kitchen that only had two chairs near a window that looked out onto a tiny backyard that was mostly paved with poles for hanging laundry. Azuku went to sit in the chair across from him, but Karchan shouted at him, No! That's my mom's seat! We have a snack together here every day after school. Azuku froze and didn't know what to do. He used to eat his snack and tell his mom about his day when he got home from school too. He knew how important that was and didn't want Karchan to miss out on his time with his mom because of him. Kotsky! Auntie scolded, sounding angry. What a way to behave! Azuku is our guest! Karchan made an angry sound at them both and crossed his arms across his chest with a glare. I'm sorry, Azuku said, trying hard not to let his voice shake. I didn't know. It's all right. Auntie said in a much softer voice than she used for Karchan. You can sit there and have snack time with Kartsky. She put a hand on his mop of curls that definitely needed a haircut and stroked gently. No, he can't! Karchan angrily denied. Azuku faded to transparency and ducked his head, backing away from both of them. Oh my god! Auntie exclaimed. What's happening? 
Azuku released and sucked in a breath, not realising that he'd been holding his breath, waiting for a verbal explosion from either Kachan or his mother about everything. Kachan growled, sounding angry or frustrated or both. Sorry, 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 Azuku chanted, wanting everyone to be happy. That happens sometimes. I'm sorry. But I thought your quirk was... Auntie began. Well, he's got two quirks now. Karchan snarled, hopping down from the chair and stomping from the room. They could hear his loud but hasty retreat through the house, up the stairs and the slam of his bedroom door as they stood there in shock. Azuku felt the first tear fall and sniffled, struggling not to cry. Why was everything so hard today? Oh, Azuku... Auntie scooped him up into her arms, even though he was too big to be carried around anymore, and hugged him tightly. You didn't do anything wrong. Kachan's mad at me, he said miserably. He said having two quirks is weird. Having two quirks is unusual, she corrected him gently. Not weird. Why don't you sit down and have your snack and I'll go tell Kartsky he needs to apologise. No, don't! Azuku said as she put him on his feet. He'll just get madder. He just wants to have his snack with you. I can go read a book and you can have a snack with him like always. Auntie looked like she wasn't sure what to say to this. She thought about it for a moment and finally decided. How about I fix you something you can eat in the living room? I'll turn on the TV and you can watch cartoons while I go see if I can get Kartsky to come down. Azuku nodded at this solution. This way he would still get something to eat and Karchan could have his alone time with his mum. He sat on a cushion beside the low table near the couch, and Auntie gave him a juice box, some apple slices, cut to look like bunnies, and a handful of rice crackers. There was a cartoon about All Might on that he had seen a dozen times, but loved enough to watch a dozen more, and he thanked her politely. She patted his head and went upstairs, and Azuku ate his snack in contented silence. Auntie stayed upstairs for a long time, so when the cartoon was over, Azuku turned off the television. He sat on the couch with a notebook retrieved from his school bag and doodled for a while until he started to feel sleepy. He didn't even realise he'd dozed off until he was being shaken awake by a rough hand. He opened his eyes to see Karchan standing by the couch, looking at him with a scowl. Mom said to wake you up because it's almost dinner time. She said I have to tell you sorry for earlier, too. Azuku sat up and looked around, surprised that it was already late enough to be dinner time. He didn't know what time his dad would even be done with work, since he was always at work. Is my dad coming to get me? I don't know. Karchan didn't seem inclined to say more than that, but he didn't seem too mad anymore either. He just walked away, retreating up the stairs, leaving Azuku where he was. At a loss, Azuku found his way to the toilet and took care of his own pressing needs, and washed his hands extra good since it was almost time to eat. He didn't know if he would be joining the Bakugo family for their meal, or if he would be eating with his dad. When they were in Taiwan, the lady who looked after him had cooked their meals too. The food had been mostly unfamiliar, but still good. When they had gotten back to Japan a couple days ago, his dad had bought convenience store food and takeaway for every meal. 
he was pretty sure his dad didn't know how to cook. There he is, Uncle said with a friendly smile as Azuku wandered into the kitchen. Hello, Uncle. Azuku greeted him the way his mother had taught him he should greet people. Kachan said it was almost dinner time. Is my dad coming to get me now? Auntie looked over her shoulder from where she was preparing bowls of rice on the counter. He called and said he was going to be a little late, she told him with an apologetic smile. So we get to keep you here a bit longer. I hope you like curry. Azuku did. Kachan didn't make another appearance until he was called for dinner, and everyone gathered around the dining room table. Azuku waited until he could tell where everyone would sit before timidly taking the remaining chair for himself. Auntie sighed, and she and Uncle gave each other another one of those looks that adults give each other that mean something. Auntie glared a bit at Kachan, and then the other boy scowled. But I did what you said. Auntie sighed again, but smiled warmly at Azuku as she put a plate of delicious smelling curry down. Thank you, he said brightly. It looks so yummy. Both grown ups chuckled. Kachan banged the handle of his spoon on the table and said, It smells great. I'm glad you think so. Enjoy, Auntie told them. Itadakimasu! Both boys dug in eagerly. Azuku carefully scooped up some rice, then some curry, and blew on it before putting it in his mouth. Kachan stirred up everything on his plate until the rice and the curry were indistinguishable from each other, and then scooped up a mouthful and ate it without checking to see if it was hot. Both boys made noises out of appreciation as they got their first taste. After everyone had gotten a few bites of their dinner inside of them, Uncle turned to Kartsky and asked, How was school today? It was okay, I guess. There was a frog near the bird feeder outside that ate a dead bug and the class guinea pigs got into a fight again. How was your first day back, Azuku-kun? He asked after listening to Kachan. Okay, Azuku said quietly, taking a drink of the water by his plate. He wasn't sure if he should say more, since it had been a very emotional day for him, and he wasn't sure if he could explain how even if he wanted to risk making Karchan mad again. Karchan had been cranky all day, but he did like it when he was praised. Karchan and I played Otadama during outside time. Karchan won like always. He is really fast. You're just too slow, Karchan said, but not in a mean way. The lighter atmosphere helped Izuku relax, and Karchan began to talk more about things at school. He seemed happy to have the attention on him, so Izuku concentrated on finishing his curry. He had just finished his last bite when the doorbell rang. That's probably Hisashi, Auntie said, getting up and moving out of the room. May I please be excused? Izuku asked Uncle. Uncle seemed a little surprised by Izuku's formality, but smiled at him and nodded. Of course. Thanks for the meal! Izuku said as he climbed from his chair and went to see his dad. His dad looked tired and was in the middle of apologising to Auntie for being so late. Auntie packed up some curry for his dad to take home for his dinner, and Azuku collected his notebook and school bag. 
they decided to walk, even though it was at least 30 minutes away by foot. Azuku was happy to have time with his dad, who was busy all the time. His dad said it was nice to stretch his legs after a long day in the office. How was school today, Zu? His dad asked as they walked. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you that Bakugo-san was gonna pick you up. Did you have fun? He let Azuku carry the bento with the curry in it, and he carried his bag with his computer and work stuff. I don't think Kachan likes having me there very much. He got mad at me for having another quirk. He said it's weird. That brat. His dad muttered quietly. He patted Azuku on the head with a smile and consoled him. He's probably just jealous because you're lucky enough to have an extra. Maybe. He said that neither one of mine is as cool as his. He's right about that, but I still like them. Your quirks are amazing, Zoo. So are you. I am so proud of how you've been handling everything that's happened this last month. I'm sorry I haven't been around as much as either of us would like, but I'm working on it. Azuku felt the little knot that had been residing in his chest for the most of the day loosen a little after hearing his father praise him. I've got my assistant researching to find someone who can look after you while I'm at work, so you can be at home, at least. I gave her a list of things we need them to be able to do, like cooking and cleaning and taking good care of you, his dad continued. Like mom used to do? Azuku asked, a little worried. No one can take your mother's place, Zoo. I know that better than anyone, but I'm useless at housework, and you're not old enough to stay by yourself until I get home. We need help. He said it gently and sounded as sad as Azuku felt about it. Azuku knew he was right, but there had been so many changes lately that he felt lost. Maybe his dad did too. I know, Azuku said with a nod. Is there anything in particular you think someone looking after you should be able to do? Azuku gave some thoughts before he answered. They should like All Might and Heroes as much as me! His dad laughed at that and said, I don't know if anyone loves heroes as much as you do. The rest of the walk home was nice as Azuku chatted with his dad. He believed it when his dad said that everything would be okay soon. The next day at school, Karchan seemed to be feeling better, especially since the teachers praised his ability to read some kanji that none of the other kids had even started to try learning. Most were still learning hiragana and some katakana. This put Karchan in a good mood, and Azuku was able to play and participate like normally without walking on eggshells. After school, Azuku was careful not to infringe on Karchan's time with his mother, saying that he wasn't hungry and didn't want a snack. Instead, he said he was tired and pretended to sleep on the couch for a while. Happy when he heard Karchan and Auntie in the kitchen chatting about their day. When enough time had passed, Azuku woke up, and he and Karchan were allowed to go down the street to the little park that had a small stream and some trees. Karchan brought his net and a little container in case they found any good beetles. Two other boys from the neighborhood were already there, looking bored. Hey! Sabasa said when he saw Azuku. You're Midoriya! My mum heard from Bakugo's mum that you have two quirks. That's a lie, right? Nobody has two quirks, stupid. 
a boy called Onaga said, shoving Tsubasa with his elbow. It's true, Azuku said. It's weird, Karchan said immediately. Prove it, Onaga demanded, pointing at Azuku. Azuku reached out a hand and pulled a stick from the nearby grass to his waiting hand and grinned. That's one, Sabasa said. What's the other one? Azuku glanced over at Karchan and saw he was scowling again. He remembered what his father said about jealousy. It's really not that great, he said carefully. He paused and held his breath. He didn't feel anything in particular, but he could tell by the interested response from the others that he was now transparent. Whoa, Onaga said. He really does have two quirks. Cool. You mean weird, Karchan corrected with a snort. Anyway, Azuku said with a shrug. That's them. I don't know why I've got two. Cause you're a freak, Karchan supplied with a roll of his eyes. The other two boys looked back and forth between Azuku and Karchan before nodding slowly. Weird, Tsubasa agreed. Weird, Onaga parroted. It might be cool if they were better quirks, though. Karchan looked satisfied by this and picked up a stick and wrote his name in the soft dirt beside the sidewalk. That distracted the others and they began drawing with sticks on the ground. Azuku watched in amazement as Karchan wrote all of their names in kanji. Look, Karchan said, writing Azuku's name in the dirt. This can also be read as Deku. That means useless, just like his quirks. The other boys laughed, and Azuku dropped his stick. That's mean, Kajan. I'm only telling the truth, came the spiteful answer. What's the matter, Deku? You mad that you got two quirks and they're both stupid? I'm gonna go back, Azuku said. He turned away as the other boys started chanting, Deku! Deku! You better not go crying to my mum, or you'll be sorry, Karchan called after him, warningly. Izuku didn't look back as he ran back to the Bakugo's house. Why was Karchan being so mean? He sat on the front step of the house, not sure if he should knock or just go inside. Would he get in trouble for not staying with Karchan? Would Karchan get in trouble for not staying with Azuku? If Karchan got in trouble, then he might be even meaner to Azuku. He didn't want that to happen. He wanted Karchan to be his friend. He wasn't sure how long he sat outside trying to figure out how to be friends with Karchan without making him mad, but eventually the front door opened and Auntie was standing there looking concerned. Azuku? I thought you went to the park with Katsuki, she said, holding out her hand to help him up. I did, he said, proud that he hadn't been crying about it. I didn't want to do what the other boys were doing, so I came back. Auntie didn't look convinced, but didn't question him about it either. She looked down the street toward the park, where she could just see the trees and benches from where she stood. Well, come on inside. You didn't have your snack before. Do you feel hungry now? Azuku did. He sat at the table in the kitchen and had some juice and some melon bread while Auntie sat in the other chair with a laptop in front of her and a pair of reading glasses perched on her nose. I got a message from your dad, she told him as he munched. He said he should be able to pick you up just before dinner time today. Okay, he said agreeably. 
He said he's trying to find someone to look after me, so you don't have to. I don't mind looking after you, she told him with a soft smile. Kachan does, Azuku said simply. I don't think he likes me here. He's used to being the only one here and getting all of the attention, Auntie said wisely. He'd get used to it. Is he being mean to you? Izuku didn't like to lie, but he also didn't like Karchan to be mean to him, which is what would happen if Izuku complained about it. My dad said he's just jealous. Your dad is right, Auntie said with a sigh. But that doesn't mean he gets to pick on you. If he does, you come and tell me about it so I can talk to him, okay? Okay, Azuku said non-committally. After his snack was finished, he went into the living room and picked out a book to look at from a little bookshelf. It had lots of pictures and appeared to be a story about a shark. He sat on the couch and opened it in his lap, trying to read some of the hiragana with only a little success. Can you read that, Azuku-kun? Auntie asked, sitting beside him and setting her computer on the table. Only a little, he confessed. I like the pictures, though. Would you like me to read it to you? Azuku nodded and sat close to Auntie so he could see the pictures while she read the story. He was feeling a little sleepy for real and leaned his head against her while he listened. When the door crashed open and Kartsky came in and saw them, he fisted his hands and shouted at Azuku, Hey, that's my book! Kartsky! Auntie shouted at him, How dare you! Karchan didn't even take off his shoes as he stomped over and grabbed the book off of his mother's lap, throwing it across the room. Azuku scrambled up and backed away from the furious glare and the sparks he could see popping in Karchan's hands. He was really, really mad. I'm sorry, Azuku said timidly, tears springing to his eyes. I didn't mean to. Stupid Deku, go home! This is my house, not yours! She's my mom, not yours! Your mom's dead! Kartsky froze as soon as the words left his mouth, as if he knew that he'd gone too far. It also might have had something to do with the fact that Auntie had slapped his cheek right after he said it. Everyone stood there, stunned for a moment. The slap hadn't been super hard, but it had been jarring, just the same. I hate you! Karchan shouted with tears in his eyes. He shoved Azuku out of his way as he ran past to scurry up the stairs to his room and slammed the door. Azuku fell down from the force of the blow, which had been aided by two mini explosions from the palms of Karchan's hands. His shirt had a pair of scorch marks on it, though his skin didn't feel burned. Azuku was too stunned to even cry. Azuku-kun, are you okay? Auntie kneeled down in front of him and helped him stand up. She inspected his shirt and the skin underneath to make sure he wasn't too hurt, then pulled him into a hug, rubbing his back. I'm so sorry he said those horrible things, she said with tears in her own eyes. Azuku just nodded and stood very still in her embrace. He would not risk clinging to her as he wanted to, in case Karchan came back and saw. I'm so sorry I made him mad, Azuku said, trying to make things better. No, Azuku-kun, you don't apologise for this. This is not your fault. Not even a little bit. It's mine, and it's Kartsky's. She told him firmly. I've spoiled him far too much. You... you hit him! Azuku said. 
His tone was not accusatory, but surprised. His own mother had never raised a hand to him, though he couldn't ever recall being as hateful as Karchan before either. Maybe she would have spanked him if he'd been bad enough. He couldn't imagine it, though. I did, she agreed, sounding sad. I probably shouldn't have. I'll go and talk to him about it once we've both had time to settle down a little. Uh, okay, he said, not sure what to say to that. They both stayed there for a moment, staring at each other awkwardly. How about I turn on a movie for you to watch, she suggested at last. Okay, he agreed for a lack of anything better to say. She turned on an animated movie, and he sat on the floor in front of the television obediently to watch, not making a sound and not moving from that spot. He could hear her talking on the phone a few minutes later, telling someone about what happened with Karchan, and hoped that there wouldn't be even more trouble when Uncle came home. Azuku quietly watched the movie about a boy who lived with a pirate in outer space, and was surprised when his father showed up before it was even halfway over. He got up and ran to him, throwing his arms around his dad's legs and squeezing tight. Thank you for everything, Mitsuki, he said to Auntie. Sorry to have caused you so much turmoil for your family. Inko was my friend, Auntie said, using Azuku's mom's name. It's the least I could do. I'm sorry it turned out this way. Azuku is a sweet, sweet boy. The next day, Azuku went to a different school, one that stayed open very late for kids whose parents worked late. He didn't go back to Karchan's house again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all the support you've given me. My heart is truly breaking for Azuku right now. I can't wait to find out what happens next. All credits go to the original creator of this fan fiction, A is for Amy, 71, on AO3. I would highly appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you subscribe to the channel and you hit the notification bell to be notified of when I next upload. There is no pressure to do so though. Thank you for visiting my cosy corner of the internet. Keep growing my sunflowers. Mwah. Thank <laughs> you.